really do thank you for coming. Next, we will now have our keynote address by Pastor Lewis Murphy Sr. Opportunity to forgive. 
I know I've stepped on some toes. And sometimes what I've discovered in my lifetime is that sometimes we even get misunderstandings. Amen. And we run with that as being the truth. Amen. When we are instructed to go to the person mm -hmm. and resolve the issue. Yes. But instead, we go to everybody else other than that person. We, we have some serious issues, and if we're honest about it, slavery still is an effect. It has an effect on our people. We got scar tissue on our minds mm -hmm. as African Americans. Our white folks need to understand that, yes, that did happen. It was part of history, real history, not his story, the real history, that it happened. And therefore, because of that, we have still segregated law. Well, we don't have segregation anymore, but there's still laws of segregation that still impact our people. Unfair law. We still got, uh, we call uh, uh, white collar crime. Crime is crime. It's still a disproportionate number of African Americans that's been incarcerated. That's real. And therefore, we have a lot of families in some areas of our community, in, in fact, I think the stats, 84% of families being headed up by single mothers. Those are real stats. Those are things that, facts that we can be honest about. We can be honest about there's still uh, uh, discrimination, still unjust laws, and we need to fight against that. So there, and those things breed poverty. We need to be honest about how we are going to really come back, have the dialogue, sit down and say, okay, let's come to an agreement that, that there are some things that we need to change about how we see each other, yeah. white and black. Amen. Not only should there be honesty, but there must be intentionality. You have to be intentional, we have to be intentional about moving the poverty needle. We've got to be intentional about increasing wealth, uh, economic development. Those things are real. And if you're not intentional, then we're just playing games. We sit around and we talk and, and so forth. Organizations say this, they say that, but they're not. Are you really intentional about making a difference? Our children, we, we have five failing schools in our community. Why? Because we do not have adequate resources to educate our children. We know for a fact that these homes, many of the homes that these children are come out, coming out of are not conducive for learning. Therefore, the community has to pick up. The church has to pick up. And I'm so thankful that the church today, in our community, the pastors in our community today, after the big breakout of Jamal Bryant coming to speak and the LGBT community, you know, wanting to boycott and all that, it brought the pastors together to come together and pray for our city. Oh, you might as well applaud for that because we continue to tear down each other even in the faith-based community. So I'm grateful for that, amen, because I don't own Mount Zion. Carlos, you don't own New Hope. Williams don't own Mount Zion AME. These churches are the kingdom of God for those of us who are believers. It is God's kingdom. We have no ownership. So therefore, we got to be very intentional about tearing down these strongholds that continue to hip, hinder the progress that we are trying to make. Not only should we be honest and intentional, but there must be unity. you got to have unity. We must come together in unity to save our community. Unity. Our Lord told us before he left, what's one of the words he said? He said, I pray that you all will be one so the world would know that my Father has sent me. Unity. And the reason why we can't really unite and come together because we got everybody want to be the boss. Everybody want to be recognized. Yeah, everybody want to be the, the chief. Huh? Yeah. Now, that, that, now, if we just gonna be real about it, everybody wanna be the head. Amen. But there gotta be some folk that can follow. Amen. We need some folk that are willing to humble themselves, submit themselves to whoever God has put in charge to lead the way. Well, let me just say this, because I had all my notes written down and for some reason or another, 
That happens every now and then. Dick, I just forget the notes and just go with what I feel in my heart. I'm reminded what Paul said. He was talking about Jesus. And Jesus was the greatest leader that ever walked the earth. How, how do you measure that? By the number of people that follow him. <laughs> Hallelujah. He, he, he was dead, he was, he was killed, crucified, buried, resurrected. But even today, billions of people yes. are still following him. Yes. Okay, you ain't got to agree with us. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, 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 but Paul, Paul said it this way, and I leave you with this. If there, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, one mind, let nothing be done through strife of vainglory, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord you know I don't know what your religious affiliation is but that word transcends religion. That if we could only humble ourselves, come together as one, we can eradicate poverty. We can get rid of racism. We can get rid of hatred and bitterness. We can get rid of homelessness. We can get rid of hopelessness. If we come together as one, we can move the poverty rate.